I'd like to show you now how you can package your slides. So that could be PowerPoint, it could be Keynote, it could be Google, Google Slides. How you can not only add audio to those slides and save it as a video, but how you can also have yourself as a presenter as part of that video. We're going to be looking at something called Adobe Presenter. Now this is a paid for program. Um, but there is a 30-day free trial and what, we're, what we want you to do is to have a go using the 30-day free trial. If you think it's for you, then we will look into providing you with a license to be able to use this. So I'm just going to walk you through the process of how this works. Now I have got, I've launched Adobe Presenter here and I've got some PowerPoint slides here. Now this by the way, is cross-platform. So if you're using a Mac or a PC, it doesn't matter. Adobe Presenter will work in a very similar way. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a new recording. And to do that, I just click on this green button here. So, okay, so this is what we're looking at right now is myself um, being captured by the video uh, by the um, video camera that's built into the computer. You can use an ex external webcam. This is just the one that comes with the, the Mac. So I'm just going to click on the record button. Oh, and this area here, this dashed line, when we go to the mode whereby there is the presenter and the slides, this is essentially what will be captured. So I'm just going to click the record button and you can see I'm about to be counted down. While I'm being counted down, I'm just going to click on the, uh, the full screen mode on my PowerPoint presentation. But as I say, this would work for Keynote. Now, I'm just going to go into presenter mode as a person just to give you that flavor of what this might be like. So, this presentation is about the design of interactive resources and using a variety of interactive media technologies. My name is Tim Morgan and I'm going to be looking at a number of things during today's session. We're going to be reviewing and evaluating a variety of learning resources. We're going to also be looking at learning through failure and we're also going to be looking at the, uh, the importance of mobile within student learning. Now Obviously you can scroll through your slides in any way you like because this is a PowerPoint presentation. I'm just going to use the uh, keys on the keyboard rather than take you through this uh, in, a, in a kind of a blow by blow account. I'm just going to end the presentation now and then we're going to look at what this, what this looks like um, when we begin to edit it. Okay, so um, I'm just going to click the escape key in order to um, come out of the presentation mode uh, from PowerPoint and you'll notice up here I have um, a little icon. I roll over and it says Adobe Presenter Video Express. As soon as I click that it will stop the recording. Okay, that's great. So what we're going to see now is um, as, as the video is being processed what we're going to see is essentially a video window here, a timeline here. Um, as I scroll across here, you're going to be able to see myself delivering this. Um, but equally, if we click down here to presentation only, what we'll see is the presentation, the slides that came up while I was talking. And if we click here, what we will see is uh, myself as a smaller image uh, plus the slides. So and what we can do is we can have a variety of different views. So let's say for example I wanted to start with just myself. I could do that. I could then click to presentation only and I could then click to both presenter and presentation. Uh, again, if I wanted to change that in any way, I could do that from here. Or I could simply just do it by clicking on these buttons here. Okay, so 
it's a very, very simple and powerful process to be able to kind of click between these and click between the different views. Now the likelihood is, is that you're going to want to get rid of the beginning and the end of your presentation. Typically that's when you're kind of setting up and winding down. So that is pretty straightforward. You've got these scissors here and if I click on that I can simply just drag that and when I'm happy with that I can just click the tick and having done that when I export the video that part will be missing. Equally if I want to trim the end it's an identical process and you also have the opportunity to trim something in the middle. Pardon, okay, let's look at pan and zoom. So if, for example, for whatever reason we wanted to focus closer on me, we could do that. I'm not going to suggest that this is a, an important thing to do at this point, but if you wanted to do that, you could do that. Certainly perhaps more relevant to the slides. So let's say we wanted to focus in on the title. We could do that as well. So again, I'm just clicking and dragging. So if for some reason that were important, I would be able to do that as well. Okay. Okay, so I can see that that's actually had an impact on, on the slide here in general. So perhaps at this point, I want us to go back to full screen. I can do that. So basically, you have a, a couple of tools down here. It's going to be worth exploring those to see how you can kind of get the best out of uh, get the best out of the program. Now let's just have a kind of a quick preview to see what this looks like and to do that I'm just going to click this play pause. Okay so you can see now we've just zoomed in and we're about to cut to the slides only then we're zooming into the slides and as we go through this, we're about to see what happens when we have the presenter and the presentation. Okay. And we're now about to zoom out from the slides area. Okay, so you can see that that's very, very simple and very, very powerful. Uh, one thing I would say, you can see uh, out of my ears here, I've got a, um, I've got a, a mobile phone um, uh, uh, earphones and, uh, and um, microphone, you are definitely going to need some something in order to capture the audio. Uh, that could be a headset that would be similar to something you might use for Skype. It could be a, a clip-on mic uh, or it could be something that you would use with your phone. So please, please, please make sure that you use something uh, because if you don't, the audio will be very, very poor and essentially you'll be creating a resource that, that can't really be used. Okay, so let's now publish this. So I'm going to say that I'm happy with what we've got. Just going to click publish and presentation. Okay, so and I'm going to publish it to my computer. Clearly there are a number of different options here, but for me uh, publishing it to the computer is going to be good. Now when I first did this I found it a little bit difficult to locate the file. So this is one of the reasons why I want us to have a look at the end result and also where to find that file. Um, obviously the file is a video file. It can be um, uploaded to QM Plus Media. Uh, as a video file it can be uploaded in principle to YouTube or any video file sharing website. 
Um, and then obviously that can then be linked through via your QM Plus page. So it's pretty important to remember the name of your file. Uh, but in actual fact, okay, so what we've got here, now this doesn't always happen. Um, it has thrown up the video in this uh, folder. I, I called it presentation. Um, now I'm just going to click on the, this, is, this is within the, the, uh, the Macintosh operating system. But, um, but basically your file will be saved to a folder called My Adobe Presenter. So if you can't find it, that is where it's going to be. It, it doesn't always pop up like this. Um, equally, again on a Mac, you can search for it. Again, it's, it's important to remember the name that you have given your file so you can search for it using uh, Spotlight. And again, if you were using a PC, you would also be able to search for it. So what we have is, this is the video here. So let's just take a, a quick look at this.